Can you hear me? No. <laughs> yeah, so can you hear me? <laughs> no. Yes. Uh, I need two hands to draw diagrams on the sky, so <laughs> I expected some hands free. So, formal introduction. Uh, my name is Esfan, and I'm an addict. Uh, you too, I guess. Hi, uh, Esfan. But our addiction is not to alcohol, it's to computer technology. So, uh, maybe you should call this technologic anonymous or something like that, TA instead of AA. Uh, the symptoms of that is anytime something comes up, let's say flux, all of a sudden I lose my appetite, I get scared, what should I do on the next interview or what if my client asks for my opinion on flux and stuff. So there goes five at least episodes of MLDF. And I have to dig into different places and see what the flux, this flux is. <laughs> and at the end, I, this is an example. Um, I realized that it same old shit that 12 years ago was invented on the server side. And everybody is using it. But it's called different things, three uh, different patterns. One is command, query, responsibility. But I'm making up, you don't have to uh, remember. CQRS that, uh, all it says is we have to send all the requests, commands, now they changed it to action. From one endpoint and all the queries from the other endpoint. And there goes one way, uh, data flow. Then we have on the command side, uh, some uh, some handlers that get the commands and create events out of it and send it out for uh, anybody who is interested, and it's called event streaming, uh, event sourcing pattern. And then there is a event store that saves all the events, not the state of the uh, object. And now they called it flux without even mentioning it, what it was. So I get a little better, I get my appetite back and I can talk and write blog posts and stuff. Um, but every once in a while, something new actually comes up. Uh, the first one I have seen for me was Angular 1 that brought up this concept of you can extend the um, browser, HTML, in a sense, have our own tag. That was really innovation, mind by that was great. So good that all the um, browser vendors thought, why shouldn't we do that ourselves, put it at the browser level, and came up this concept of web components. And it became so popular that now component, before that component meant 200 different things. But after that web component, everybody uh, remembers this web component as the component. And all the frameworks started using that. Angular 2, React, Ember, or ADL, you name it. If they don't have component, it's old fashioned. So that was the first thing I saw that was really eye-opening. Second one was <coughs> uh, Relay, um, I'm sorry, uh, React from the um, Facebook that picked that component and component tree and add something really fantastic to it, which is the virtual DOM, which in a sense, it says dealing with DOM nodes and jQuery to change them and bring them to the next uh, data state on the screen is not for programmers. Programmers have better things to do. So they push down DOM manipulation to actually framework level, which is great. Uh, and we just as a programmer write a component tree and 
rest is done creation of dome and stuff like that by uh, the framework and better than that we are not even limited to document object models it can be native anything as far as we are concerned we have the same uh, calls and api and stuff to write our own application so uh, react native and things like that um, started um, so now everybody all the framework new one picked that concept too on top of component and component three uh, including angular 2 uh, that they have exact same thing uh, but it's just a concept concept is we have our data we just push it into component three and the framework just understand that component three and take care of the DOM or whatever it is that gets rendered on the screen or phone or whatever. Uh, but each one of them, React and Angular and Aurelia and stuff like that, they implement that concept totally differently. Uh, there is no concept of Angular, uh, concept of uh, virtual DOM in Angular 2. They have the same concept. You have data, push it into component three, and that's it. The rest is done by the uh, framework. Um, before, um, uh, maybe it's time to explain a couple of things. Uh, when I posted this idea of talk, uh, I was under the impression that I have one hour so I have three 20 minutes, one for prerequisites to uh, Angular, things like TypeScript or uh, bundler, module bundler, and stuff like that, 20 minutes to go into anatomy of this Angular 2 component and component three. And the third one was uh, change detection, which is really important. That's the whole thing about uh, Angular. Uh, so I had a choice which one to take for 20 minutes. Uh, I picked the most important one, that is uh, change detection. So that means I have to merge all those other two into that, and that's why I need your help to stop me and, and uh, remind me that I'm saying some buzzword that is not well known. And you need to explanation. You don't need to tweet or anything. Just stop me right here. Uh, the second thing was that, uh, let's forget about Angular 1. Uh, I think for a good marketing reason, uh, Google picked Angular 2 instead of something else, like Aurelia did. Uh, but it causes a lot of problem for everybody. Uh, it's like when automobile came out, they could pick horse and carriage too. Uh, because they wanted whoever has uh, horse and buggy come and buy automobile. The same, same difference between Angular 1 and Angular 2. Uh, on top of that, just to make Angular 1 programmers happy, they created facade, uh, mask, or whatever, that kind of emulates what Angular 1 is. But that's by itself one level of abstraction that confuses. It's good for hello world, but beyond that, we have to know what's underneath. Uh, so my suggestion is, for anybody who wants to learn Angular 2, forget about Angular 1. Learn the concept of Angular 2, and then go back and correlate that to this or this to that. It makes a lot easier to not to talk about abstracts like engine model or stuff like that. It doesn't exist, but they make it up just to get the programmers coming to the framework. Uh, then the third one is, uh, I guess that's it. So, so let's go to, from now on, I'm talking about specific stuff. Maybe before that, I talk about component and component three because those are common between everything. 
um, component is actually right in front of us. You bring up any uh, web page, has a top and a bottom and a left and a right and a main center. Right there is five components under the root. Then each one of those, let's say top, has a navigation and a logo and, and a few other things. So that again, that top component has this many choice. There we go, it's just recursively apply this to any portion and you end up with component tree, nothing more than that. Uh, of course, the question is how, how deep should it go to go to the level of just a paragraph or image or stuff or somewhere higher, just, just bundle something in the div and call that a, a leaf component. It's a matter of judgment. It's somewhere in between. <clears throat> so it's up to us to decide. And there are a few guidelines, something like if they are by the same team, they are coming from same server, thing like that, uh, kind of influence our decision. But beyond that, it's just that component is component three is that. So what is component? Uh, component is something that uh, in all of these fr new frameworks, uh, something some class. Um, I wonder, uh, this concept of class is from object-oriented programs. Uh, I wonder if you're familiar with the concept. Anybody is familiar, doesn't need more explanation or not? Please raise, raise your hand. Okay, so, so I assume that we know class. It's nothing but a bunch of <clears throat> I'm sorry, I go get some water. There's plenty to drink. <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> not, that's, that's not to try. <laughs> component itself, uh, that's a managed object. People who know uh, Java or .NET or stuff like that, or dependency injection in general, uh, managed object is something that uh, we don't instantiate a class. It is the framework that does new and the constructor. That, that's called uh, component, essentially. Uh, when it comes to JavaScript frameworks. Um, when the framework instantiate uh, an object, then uh, framework is also uh, in charge of getting rid of it, destroy it, the garbage collected at the end. <clears throat> and then some, some stuff in the middle uh, that in it and destroy it is almost too the common things that all the frameworks want was communicate with the writer of author of the component to let it know that now you got started, you got instantiated, now you are going to be destroyed in case we allocate something in the init and, <clears throat> and we want to uh, get rid of it, deallocate, resource, a connection to database, something like that. Uh, so generally, Manage the object they have an init and a destroy, and something in between. Those are called uh, life cycle method, life cycle hook, I mean, hooks, life cycle anything. If you see life cycle, it's in React to. Uh, that means the points that framework calls some method of the component to tell it that something happened. Uh, the most important one uh, for Angular 2 is 
something uh, in it happens one time, uh, destroy happens one time at the end, in between many, many times, a method called do check, do check, go, go ahead and check. And that's all. That's all communication between Angular and us. Anything else is up to us. Uh, in terms of component. So, so when we write components, if you're interested in uh, some initialization time, we implement on init method. If we are interested in destroy, we write on destroyed method and anything else. Lots of time we don't need it, so component doesn't need have uh, any on init. <clears throat> um, so important thing here is that by this description, Ang Angular has doesn't know anything, not a jack about uh, what our data is. It just knows how to uh, go and traverse that uh, component tree and call the life cycle that now you, that component, you are time to do check. And beyond that, there is nothing about uh, our data that uh, Angular 2 knows about. Unfortunately, they don't make it very clear in their talks and stuff like that, that it's that way. And they start talking about immutable objects, RxJS, and which makes things muddy. Not that they are not important, actually they are, but they are our concept. It's not the framework concept. Uh, if we do immutable objects or Redux or whatever, immutable JS or we use RxJS um, or anything else. Um, so question is, then how can we get this uh, calls when Angular needs a field of our object, which is a cl uh, class? And uh, do, do I have to uh, a little bit uh, explain about the, this object called component, uh, or, or is it clear? Mm -hmm. uh, am I vague in saying that? these call, calls and callbacks. I, I, mean, think, I think it's pretty clear. If people have yeah. questions, they can ask. Okay, um, so please, please stop me. Uh, I assume that you ask me and, uh, and that's how I, I move forward. Uh, so question is how uh, is possible that we, uh, that um, framework Angular 2 gets some data from us because we have uh, state in that object. Uh, the key is one of the features of object-oriented, that is getters and setters, accessor methods. When we say in an object-oriented uh, way, uh, person dot name, it actually is not a data field. It's a getter. If we use it on the uh, right-hand side of an uh, equation, if we use it something on the left, like person dot name equal. That is a setter. And in JavaScript, we have get name and set name as a function. So those are actually not uh, real data that Angular is asking us. It just calls a function. Now, in the implementation of that getter, get name, we can throw a coin and return a value. No data, just a random coin. Or we can have a field actually in the object that has name. Or we can contact some global object that is Redux and do whatever we want to do. Uh, as far as Angular concerned, it just calls getter and setter to, to give us a chance to provide or get information. Uh, that's very important and that's the key to uh, the fact that Angular doesn't know anything about our data, those are all methods. It calls that, uh, and that is the, perhaps the main uh, feature of object-oriented, that is encapsulation. Nobody outside of this object 
uh, should know about internals because if they do, then they become dependent and we have problem uh, because if we change something, we break something somewhere else. So uh, because of that, this getter and setter, the access of methods are very important. Uh, so, so that was the basics of uh, Angular component. Uh, how much time I have approximately? So maybe five minutes. Ten or so. So, so now I, I start talking about this magic of uh, Angular, which is uh, change detection. How does it know that when to start uh, changing, calling our methods, when to start rendering, and things like that? Uh, there are one. There is one JavaScript one one that we need to know. And second one is a library that happened to be by Angular team and it's called zone.js. Uh, the first one, the 101 is actually, when Angular 2 started, I, I realized that I don't know that. I, I went back and uh, found a fantastic video that explains this interworking of JavaScript engine, the virtual machine. Uh, when we, when it actually, uh, when it comes to async, when it called back and who gets the turn and stuff like that. Uh, I have posted a fantastic video that is the classic one that explains uh, that aspect of JavaScript. Uh, but in a nutshell, uh, whenever from the uh, global level we call a function, it has a call stack. It pushes, the virtual machine pushes that call to the call stack. And when that function calls another function, then again it pushes another one on top of that uh, and hides the previous one. And the stack goes up and down depending on when a function returns, something pops out of stack. When a function is called, virtual machine pushes in this step. Now, it goes all the way, eventually, that global level call comes back. And at that time, um, in JavaScript uh, language, they call it uh, virtual machine turn. One turn is over, it's time to another one, get the turn. Uh, and that's the time that uh, Angular gets involved. As soon as that stack is empty, uh, I will explain how uh, Angular wakes up and do its own job. I will explain what those jobs are. Uh, but in general, how Angular does it is the mystery. And that is the zone JS, which brings me to second uh, infrastructure things that we need to know. At least functionally, we don't need to know how it's implemented. It's very complex. It's like uh, brain surgery on the browser to let Angular know on every single thing. Uh, it's very simple to use, uh, but it's very complicated. It's like uh, watch, very complex inside. Oh, you have two hands that tells us what the time is. Uh, what is zone JS is essentially uh, those three different kinds of asynchronous things that JavaScript provides, those are set timeout. Uh, second one is uh, Ajax call, uh, XHR. Uh, third one is DOM events. Keep, press, or stuff like that, click. Uh, when any one of those happens, as a result of zone JS, uh, Angular 2 wakes up and says, oh, what happened? Now something is losing its turn. Now I should render. Or some DOM event happened. Oh, I have to go to, this is the mind boggling thing. On every single event that happens, that, job, uh, that Angular wakes up, it goes through that whole component tree. It can be thousands of uh, nodes hierarchically. 
but every single click or anything else, it must go and see if that component is changed, and if that component, one by one. Uh, but it's okay, you can do it. Uh, if you're not talking about Facebook application or Amazon, and stuff like that. But if you have some unusual thing, it's really big, big uh, tree, that is the main feature of uh, Angular, that uh, Angular 2, that nothing else is like it. Uh, in Angular 1, there was no way you can influence the uh, behavior of uh, Angular framework. Uh, it was take it or leave it. In, in Angular 2, it's totally different. You have a lot of control. Uh, it's just personal analogy, maybe it's ridiculous, but I remember this ballroom dancing, uh, tango, you can tell them. Uh, two couple can uh, go and uh, learn the tango steps and go on the stage and do their own job, but they don't get a trophy. They can get going. If you want to be queen or king or stuff like that, uh, you have to know the partner's capabilities, limitations, whatever. It's exactly between us and Angular. We need to dance together in order to make things efficient. Uh, and it's very easy, actually, it's really easy. Uh, to, to do that, it gives me all the options to, it's like we are the man, we are the leader who leads the dance and Angular is the female, uh, takes the commands. Right? But we as a leader, we need to know not to act too much because we all that. Uh, same thing with the Angular and the framework. And that uh, miracle happens in the, um, what is called uh, uh, change detection. Um, the two kinds of change detection activity that Angular 2 does. One is on every single event, it, it wakes up and traverses the tree in a web first manner. Every single. And then, when the it time to uh, virtual machine turn, it it wakes for a different kinds of thing. That different kind of thing is it takes those change detected uh, component tree and renders them, makes the DOM out of it. Behind the scene, it does the same thing as React. It really don't uh, do it from scratch. It has the previous uh, DOM uh, tree, and it just go figure out, figures out in a very efficient way how to manipulate that to make it the new DOM tree. But it gives us the impression that don't worry about the previous one. Just give us the refreshed component. Angular takes care of. Uh, rendering it. Uh, and also it doesn't have to be done. It can be anything. That Angular, some, it's replaceable <coughs> in Angular. We can remove that DOM <coughs> manipulation, DOM handler, DOM renderer, and put some native script or uh, React Native or something else. They actually work with both of those. Um, So let's talk about this interaction between us and the Angular when it's time to uh, change detection and render. Uh, I'm almost about the end of time. Uh, yeah, a couple more minutes is fine. Okay. Uh, at the rendering time, uh, I said that there is a, a do check. Uh, life cycle method that it calls, but that's difficult for us to implement that. Uh, and 
Instead of that, out of the box, Angular 2 provides an implementation for that. That is smart enough to, uh, to implement do check, no matter what your component is, and uh, take care of what is changed, what is not changed. Um, and that is the default uh, do check implementation provided by Angular 2. Again, this is another thing that they don't make it clear that uh, we have it do check only as a life cycle. But a default implementation of do check comes with Angular out of the box. And, and that one calls some other method that is called on change. So when it calls on change, uh, it just lets us know that I took care of this change. I know the previous one. I know the current one. I flag that this is dirty, this component. And, and the rest is done by them. Um, so that they call it uh, um, strategy for change detection. The default strategy, I mean, the, the normal strategy is go ahead and do depth first and every single event uh, scan, traverse this component tree and take care of the changes. The default one is actually smart. Uh, if we can set a uh, decorator metadata that says, I want uncheck strategy. When we do that, then it doesn't go blindly uh, traverse the whole component tree. Instead, uh, it, it calls unchange lifecycle method, kind of dummy lifecycle method, and uh, let us do our stuff. At that point, then it's us to do some smart thing, to, to make it possible for Angular not to traverse that sub thousand ch children and descendants that we have. Uh, just skip it because we don't have any change. Happened at root level, we may not have any change on the new one. So no need for Angular to go through all that uh, scanning on every uh, single event. So that's the main thing that we need to know good in order to write efficient programs. Uh, I think uh, I can defer the rest for some other time. Uh, maybe I should mention that uh, I knew this is going to happen. Right? <laughs> I'll be halfway. So I set up a YouTube, uh, not a specific for here, a YouTube channel that it's kind of cooperative uh, learning school class. The idea is to have limited number of people every every annual on air uh, <coughs> meetings, and one of us become responsible for for explaining the theme of that session. Go ahead and go uh, study change detection and then come over there and explain it to other people who are maximum 10 can be there, but we can record it for anybody for later that can't attend. Uh, so the idea is that leader, that explainer, speaker, responsible to learn it himself and then come and uh, explain to others and answer questions. He may get lucky to get some uh, good speakers, not like me, uh, somebody who is actually maybe a member of Angular team because it's just virtual. They can be there. We have a weekly uh, plan to have every Wednesday, eight and night, one hour, uh, to have one session beforehand. We, we explain what is it that they're going to talk, and I will try and a few other friends we have in Angular uh, meetup to find some good speaker or some volunteer from us. If nobody else was there, I, I'll take responsibility to go and study and come and do my best. So you're welcome to, to uh, 
become a subscriber to that channel and see it's experimental see how far we can get it the idea is lots of people they can't afford to go to conferences and paid classes and stuff like that uh, unless they are uh, employee or some enterprise and even them they go to Las Vegas to have fun not to learn so somewhere we have to learn uh, and this I thought maybe a good way to help each other free for free to learn and then leave some recorded session if that is worthy otherwise you just scratch it and do it again uh, the idea is to have course channel and so you're welcome to be there so yeah please post the link to Facebook and Twitter and we'll retweet it to the Helsinki JS account sure sure or I can put on the subject of the Oh, the talk, yeah. And, talk, uh, and we'll tweet yeah. that out. That's perfect. Yes, great. Right, do that. Is there any questions? Any questions or comments? Uh, this is about those uh, uh, There is noise background. I can't hear anything. Can you please come here? And yes, it's a change. Can you make kind of all the strategies on that? Can you make, uh, can you implement your own change detection strategy? The change to strategy? Oh, I see. Uh, the default strategy is we have no control and Angular does anything. The strategy on change means leaving every, everything to us. So that's the meaning of uh, the We can do anything we want. There are two main ways. That is good way, recommended way, is using immutable application state, just one object, and use Redux or something, or immutable object. The other good way is to use RxJS, uh, observable, to, to do that based on subscription. Perfect. Thanks.